So a faster way of finding the determinant of a matrix, this is the 3-2 shortcut, um, is to first use row reduction to put the matrix in echelon form, and then use the fact that you just discovered in your activities that the determinant of a triangular matrix is the product of the entries on the main diagonal, which is upper left to lower right. So the theorem that relates the determinant of the original matrix to a, a to a row equivalent matrix B, it says that if you do um, a multiple of one row of A added to another row, then the determinants don't change, right? So the, that move that we do most frequently doesn't change the determinant. If you swap two rows, that makes the determinant negative, or if it was already negative, makes it positive, it changes the sign. Um, and if one row of A is just scaled by a scalar K, then the determinant of your new matrix is K times the determinant of the original. So let's practice one. Yeah, sorry, I didn't, I, I forgot to put it in the actual packet. I, I stole it from the reading notes. If you have that packet, it's in there. All right, so I've got this matrix here. I want to find its determinant in as few steps as possible. I do not want to do um, a cofactor expansion because none of my rows or columns have a lot of zeros. I could maybe use the first column. It's got one zero in it, but it's still going to take forever. So I'm just not going to do that. So my goal is going to be to put this into triangular form using our row reduction algorithm. You do have to actually do it. You can't have your calculator just row reduce this for you because you have to know what you did in order to know how to change the de value of the determinant. Like you have to know, oh, I swapped two rows. I got to change the sign now. Or I scaled row three. I have to multiply the new determinant by three. So you have, do have to know the algorithm. <laughs> so I've got... So when I, when I have you do this, like I have intentionally like manipulated the way I set up the problem so that you never have to do more than like a few steps and like everything kind of falls out in just like your first few steps. But just so it could be tedious, but I've tried not to make them tedious. All right, so let's see my original matrix. One, two, zero, negative three, negative three, negative five, negative four, 10. 1, negative 1, 5, negative 6, and negative 2, negative 2, 1, 8. Okay, so I'm just using the vertical bars, which means determinant. So this is going to be equal to a determinant if I do a row replacement, like add, do a multiple of one row added to another row. The determinants will be the same. So what I'm going to do is try to knock out this 2 and this negative 3. I'm going to do them both in one step. Um, because I think we've probably had enough experience that we're capable of doing that. So I'm just going to put a big equal sign here and not the squiggly row equivalent, because this is a determinant, which is just a number. So it's going to be equal to the next determinant. So to get rid of the 2, I need to replace row 2. Okay, So row 2 is going to become, yeah, I'm going to do row 2 plus negative two row one, that's my new row two. And then I'm also going to do row three at the same time here. So I'm going to take row three and add three row one, and that'll become my new row three. So I'm going to do two steps. So I'm changing row two and row three. So one and four don't change. I'm just going to copy them before I do any work. Row four, uh, sorry, this row three is supposed to be row four. Row four plus three row one becomes my new row four. So row three doesn't change, zero, negative four, five, one. Okay, so my new row two, I'm going to add row two to negative two row one. So negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, plus 2 is 0. And then negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6, plus negative 5 is 1. And then negative 2 
times 1 is negative 2, minus 1 is negative 3. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4, plus negative 2 is 2. Yeah, got it. Okay. So then my new row 4, I'm going to take row 4 and add 3 times row 1. So 3 times 1 is 3, plus negative 3 is 0. 3 times negative 3 is negative 9, plus 10 is 1. 3 times 1 is 3, minus 6 is negative 3. And 3 times negative 2 is negative 6, plus 8 is 2. So you can see I kind of made things work nicely. I got all the zeros here, and I also have a 1 in my next pivot position. Like, nice. Um, worked, it just works out nicely. So I've tried to sort of manipulate them all so that it only takes a couple of steps. Okay, so my next step is I want zeros below the next pivot. So I want this negative 4 and this 1 to be a 0. Big equal sign. So to get rid of the negative 4, I'm going to be changing um, row 3. So I'm going to do row 3 plus 4 row 2. And that's my new row 3. So I'm going to use this 1 to knock out the stuff below it. And then I'm going to change row 4 by adding, by subtracting row 2. That's negative row 2. That's my new row 4. Okay, so rows 1 and 2 aren't changing, so I'm going to copy those. All right, row 3, I'm going to add 4 row 2 to it. So first entry is still a 0. 4 times 1 is 4, plus negative 4 is 0. 4 times negative 3 is negative 12, plus 5 is negative 7. And then 4 times 2 is 8, plus 1 is 9. Yeah, OK. And then my next change is to row 4, and I'm going to do row 4 minus row 2 give me my new row 4. So 0 minus 0 is 0. 1 minus 1 is 0. Negative 3 minus negative 3 is 0. And 2 minus 2 is 0. So now it's in triangular form, right? I now have my every leading entry is uh, on the diagonal. Okay. So now the determinant of a triangular matrix is the product of the elements on the main diagonal, 1 times 1 times negative 7 times 0, which is 0. So this matrix that I just found the determinant of, is it invertible? No. And if it's not invertible, what can you say about its columns? Are they linearly independent or dependent? Dependent, right, by the invertible matrix theorem. OK, so we want to find a formula for the determinant of k times a. So if you scale an entire matrix by the, oh, yes, question. So because in this one, um, the determinant value never changed because I only used the most common um, row replacement formula. But there are two other things you're allowed to do, right? You're allowed to swap two rows. And when you do that, you have to change the sign. So like if I had swapped two rows from this step to this step, I would have to throw a negative in front because the sign of the determinant changes. It happens twice. Each time you do it, you change the sign. If you scale a whole row, so if I were to say, okay, I'm going to scale all of row one by two. I don't know why I would do that. But like if I do that, then I would say, okay, if I scale this whole row by two, then you have to put a two in front of your new determinant. Nothing happens.
not invertible. Yeah. Yeah. So your calculator can find determinants. Yeah. Yes. So you could you can always check. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so one of the other things you can do, that's what this next question is about, is um, one of your other things you can do when you're doing the row reducing formula is scale a row, right? So if I have a matrix A and I scale the whole matrix, that means scale every single entry, right? So let's say A is um, 1, 2, oops, why did I? One, two, three, four, right? Then um, K times A would be K, 2K, 3K, 4K, right? Because when you multiply a matrix by a scalar, it means multiply every entry by that scalar. So if I want to find the determinant of K times A and how it's related to the determinant of A, what I did is I scaled both rows by k. So if I only scale one row by k, that changes the determinant by a factor of k, but I'm doing both by a factor of k, so that would be k squared in this case, right? So here, um, the determinant of the determinant of ka would be k squared times a because I scaled one row and another row, both rows by k. So you have to change the determinant by a factor of k squared. Multiply by k twice. But what if it's an n by n? What if you have n rows? k to the n. So the more general rule is that the determinant of k times a is k to the n times the determinant of a. 